I um, wanted to give you a quick uh, video breakdown of some new software functionality that we have in DTX Studio and DTX Studio Diagnose. So here we have a 3D panel that was created from a, a narrower uh, field of view with a uh, uh, CBCT machine, Kava OP3D Pro. Um, we could improve this panel a little bit. We're not going to focus on that right now. It gives us some areas to work with from the standpoint of treatment planning dental implants. So there's new functionality. This is software version 2.3. This is the Mac OS version. Um, but if you have the newest version, which you probably do if you've got DTX Studio, there's this implant view and implant planning portion of the software. Now this isn't necessarily designed to create models and print and, and create guides, but it's for us to review and evaluate implants. So it's really cool. So I'm going to walk you through it. I like to start with a 3D panel. You can certainly go over to the implant planning view, but I just start here. Um, click on implant. It's going to add, ask me what I want to do. If I want to add an implant product so I can import, download new software or new implants uh, materials. We already have the one that we normally use, which is Nobel BioCare. Um, the uh, active. So I'm going to add. It's going to ask me. You can see a little floating uh, words there indicate the shoulder point. So this is your implant platform. I'm going to click in the center and then indicate the tip of the implant. And so we're going to give it a little bit of space there and it's going to plug in an implant for us. You can see over here on the right side it's got a Nobel BioCare, the TIE Ultra, <clears throat> regular platform 3x10. So the computer's kind of guessing what we want. So I can change this if I want to go to a wide platform. It inserted a 7 millimeter implant. <clears throat> if I want to go to 8.5, which is probably what I do in this indication, and you see it's, <clears throat> excuse me, it's really easy to move this around. And then if I want to move it, you know, left, right, up, down, I'm realizing we're moving it only in two planes. When we go back to either the implant or the 3D patient view, we can move it, you know, in the sagittal and, and uh, I guess, axial planes. So let's rotate it a little bit. So I just go scroll down here to the apex, and now I can rotate it. I could do the same from the shoulder, and then I can remove it again if I want to add another implant over here. We're going to click Add Implant again, and I'm going to indicate the shoulder point, the tip point. Pretty simple. You see it defaulted to the wide platform. Uh, I'm going to roll this over just a little bit to get a little bit better delivery pathway, uh, or you know, assuming that I'm going to be restoring it. We want to make sure we have clear access to that opening. Um, it looks like we've got plenty of space below or above the, uh, the inferior alveolar canal. Um, so I could actually probably change this. So I'm going to click on implant 19 and I'm going to make that a 10 millimeter implant. So still have a couple of millimeters of space there in my opinion. Now what about this area here? What's that? Tooth number 13 I guess? Um, let's add an implant there and see what the computer gives us. Click go up here to the floor of the sinus, click, it should put in, a, oh it put in a wide, so let's make that a narrow platform and increase the length to 11 and a half. Pretty cool. Okay, so now we've got the implants placed. I'm not sure if this would work with that space. We might you know, need to do a little enameloplasty there or even consider some ortho depending on the situation. There's plenty of space up here to slide those teeth around to get a better uh, profile there. You can also don't tell anyone I told you this. Consider a single tooth cantilever bridge that's non-functional, a non-functional cantilever off that first molar um, to close that space if it was an issue. I've done that a few times, works out really well. Anyway, so now we've, we've got them positioned in two dimensions. Let's look at what they look like in three dimensions. I'm gonna go to 3D patient, and let's double click to get back out of this screen. You can see they're off, they're a little bit, little bit outside of where we want them to be, right? So I'm going to scroll to roughly where they are. I'm going to start dragging them around. And again, the same rotate tool is available. And at this point, that may be a little too close to the nerve for me. So I'm going to go over here, click on, see I have this one actively selected. I'm going to click on implant 19, change that to a shorter implant. Okay, feel better about that. And let's change that just a little bit. Okay, and I can also grab this guy over here. We can rotate this one to make sure we capture that bone. And you see the little arrows, so we can certainly grab the arrows and adjust them with just the arrows, but it's just as easy to grab the body of the implant and move it around. Now for this one, the IA canal is not quite as clear. I'm assuming that it's right there, um, but you would want to do some you know, investigation and of course delineate out that IA canal before you committed to placing an implant anywhere. 
Okay, so then I'm going to scroll through and just make sure I like where roughly where those are positioned. And I can go back to that 3D pano. They should look very similar. Now this, to me, looks like it's a little too close now to tooth number 12. So let's drag that distally just a smidge. And we have an uh, undercut there. We're going to rotate that. Same thing here. That's way too close. We're going to slide that over. Sometimes as you move them around in other views, it'll also change the orientation. It means you'll distally. So we're going to adjust those a little bit. All right. So pretty cool functionality, really nice um, from the standpoint of being able to sit down and talk with a patient about this. Um, it's really powerful to be able to say to a patient, hey, are you interested in implants? Let's do that. And if you're a GP or have a, if you're a GP that places implants and are prepared to do that, I mean, you can sometimes convert these discussions into opportunities to serve and provide treatment immediately. Uh, I remember a case back in Albuquerque, I had a patient walk in the door who had five missing teeth. Um, and we talked about implants. I didn't have this available to me then. This was probably seven or eight years ago. Um, but he walked out the door a couple hours later with five dental implants having been placed that I was able to place because we were prepared, had everything in, on board, and uh, you know he was ready and the financial piece of the puzzle was worked out for him. So that being said, um, it's great functionality. It's very simple. I would encourage you to use it chair side with your patients. Um, pull that up in front of the patient, talk them through the implant placement. Uh, it'll not only allow them to see that this is a real possibility, but also it gives them a lot of confidence in you as a clinician when they can see you using digital tools in front of them uh, to restore their teeth. So I had a patient we placed a couple of implants in last week on, implants on, implants in, uh, last week. Um, and he, he told me this, he's like, I had a buddy, this is the patient speaking, uh, I had a buddy that asked me why I went to this office, O'Fallon Modern Dentistry, um, for implants when I could probably get them cheaper somewhere else. And he pointed to this, the screen, which I had a very similar screen up that you see here, uh, and he said, this is why. <laughs> because he had confidence in our technology and, of course, in the team as well. So I'd encourage you to use the technology. Um, take advantage of what tools you have in front of you um, to help the patient see what possibilities there are uh, and the opportunities that we have uh, to serve them. And you know, on second thought, we're going to make this back to 10. That might be a little close, but uh, we'd certainly take a, a depth x-ray with uh, one of the parallel posts and see exactly where we were replacing that and maybe back away from anything too deep. Um, read a great article about, you know, what the wider uh, dental implants as we get more, more posterior, we ought to try to use a wider implant. It gives us a better emergence profile and, and less chance of food impaction under those, you know, the lollipop shape abutments. Um, I've always been a one size fits all type of guy with regard to, you know, regular 4.3 by 10 or by 11.5. But the p more posterior we go, first and second molars, we ought to try to put in the wider implants. It actually gives a much better emergence profile, more cleansability, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So, um, please message me, email me, call me, text me if you have any questions. I'd be happy to give you some feedback and some walkthrough. Thanks so much, guys. Enjoy. And gals.